With the time being uh, 501, we'll call the meeting to order for Park and Rec. Uh, who never would like to take roll call? That would be great. Baird? Here. Gallops? Mansman? Here. Ignesky? Here. Kimball? Here. Fox? Here. Millen? We have a quorum. So, uh, Tim Fox is a new member of the um, committee. Tim, I'm Adam Sante, I'm the city administrator. Um, you obviously have met Ashton, <laughs> Parks and Rec director. Um, if you want to uh, introduce yourself, and then the group can obviously welcome him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <You're welcome. laughs> My name is Tim Fox. Um, I've lived in Brooklyn for a couple years now. My wife teaches over at Barlow Park, um, and I am a personal trainer. So I was just interested in being on the committee just to uh, be another voice to advocate for parks and the wonderful things that they do for our community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. much. I'm Jason Manson. I've been on the community forever, it seems like. So, uh, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for joining. Sandy Wisniewski. I've been in a long time as a teacher. <laughs> um, Nancy Baird. I don't know how long I've been in the What are our terms? Three years? Yeah, I think so. So I did one term and now I'm in the second term. Uh, Jason Kibben, uh, been here about a year now. Um, <coughs> live nearby, um, just answer the survey and respond and mention it. If you want to learn about this call, he's here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We got, yeah, we had quite a come up. Couple of <laughs> yeah. All right, um, now that we have formal introductions complete, uh, we'll move on to the approval of the meeting minutes from January 24th. I did have one change. Um, I appreciate the fact that I was included as a second time on the motions, but I wasn't here. Um, so, <laughs> that. Uh, wasn't able to be me, so I'm not sure who did that, so that would be reflected under the first item there. And I was not the person that seconded that to the recommendation, so. We'll look back and change. Yeah, no worries. So. Uh, any other further discussion on the meeting minutes? If not, I'll turn a motion to approve. Absolutely. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. We turn it over to Ashley. Okay. Um, so for the Senior Activity Center fee structure. So if any time that anybody, any amount of time that someone uses this building, it's um, $250 if you're here for an hour, if you're here for 10 hours. Um, and I, it's been brought to my attention actually quite a bit that um, if you're only here for such a short amount of time, that it can be a lot for that one to two hour or three hour time span. Um, and there, this year in particular, there's been quite a few people that have called and they actually didn't end up using the building just because of the time that they were gonna be here and the cost. Um, so then it got me thinking, and I was thinking about last year, but I, um, we didn't put it into the new free fee structure. Um, if we did possibly like a half day, like registration or so there would be like a half day fee and then the full day fee i don't know like if we did like four hours or less 125 or something along the lines of that or uh and on four hours plus is the 250 um four hours is also not a half a day either so i don't know if typically when i when people reserve it it's in between the hours of like seven and like the max has been 10 p.m so it's always in between that time so is there a time limit of how when people can reserve the building? The There's not like a specific time limit. Okay, that's what I was wondering if you had hours or something that. Yeah. So, yeah, or oh, maybe just thinking about coming up with an hourly rate then. That was also a, another thing I have on here is hourly rate like, question. So I don't know. And then that way, you know, if somebody <laughs> wants it from 7 to 10, they pay for it from 7 to 10. If somebody wants it from 4 to 8, they pay for 4. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I feel like that just feels better for scheduling and for ease of customer use as well as understanding what they're paying for. Mm -hmm. But then is there like a, I don't know, like a max 
Yeah. You can't. Yeah, I, I guess that then there would be like. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we figure out what the whole? Yes, there would have to be a match. Yeah. Just divide yeah. it. What is that? Or yeah, you know, most you'd end up paying would be the two hundred and fifty. Right. Yeah. You know, but then here's the hours. I'm just curious. The hours between that people can reserve this and everything because the park closes at. I basically did it like the park hours in a way, um, okay. which are it's eight to ten. So, yeah. but I do it like seven to ten because a lot of people like set up wise and stuff like that. They have to get in here earlier. Um, like for example, there's a pancake breakfast coming up, and they're just using it for two hours. But they're they're coming in to set up actually at uh, six thirty. Um, but so they're coming in earlier. Um, but yeah, it's just two hours and it's two fifty. So, and I, in a way, I I kind of feel. That, that there's no decipherment between hourly and full day. I don't know what your opinion is on it. You'd have to include setup time because right. otherwise... So, yeah, so anytime that people reserve the building, um, the setup time is included in like that full time frame. Um, when I have to put in the security system, like what time it needs to unlock, like that's when the reservation starts. Okay. Yeah. So what if there's a minimum? Two hour minimum. Yeah, eight dollars maximum. Yeah, like seventy five dollars an hour. So much you know, maximum, maximum two and then the maximum two, two fifty right. all day. You know what I mean? Like that gives people a choice for doing just a couple of hours. I, I seventy five is just the number that popped up, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it gives people an option then for doing a couple of hours at a somewhat inexpensive rate. But then someone that wants it all day isn't paying some astronomical fee right. because it's, mm -hmm. all, you know, like we, yeah. we, we need to find that balance on exactly where it is. But. Yeah, I can, I mean, I can like calculate it and figure out an amount that makes sense and then we can revisit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. I think that makes sense because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I myself thought about running it. And I think the general <laughs> the general logic in establishing it at two fifty um, was also you know having this security deposit so that is locked in. I would have yeah. changed any of yeah. that because if they're using the kitchen or there's damage. We want to make sure that that's right. Good. And there could easily still be a security yeah. deposit that is then refunded if you know the total cost doesn't exceed that or whatever. You know. Yeah, and, and then two hundred. Two hundred fifty dollars if you go max capacity. It's about two bucks a person, right? Like, right. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just comes down to the, you know how these things work. It's it's we want it from two to four, and they're sitting here till five thirty, talking and cleaning up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's where you know we, we do have to be conscious about that. Well, I, with I the security like deposit too, if they stay late, you can. Mm -hmm. go into that if you make it a reasonable rate. But that was the whole thing. It's $250. Um, so I think an hourly rate at $50 to $75 an hour, not to exceed $250, you know, if somebody needs it for two hours, they can save $150. Yeah. You know? I, and, and I feel like with the sign-in and sign-out system, mm -hmm. you could charge them an exact yep. dollar amount then too. And then that would take care of the, oh, well, they sat here till 530. Well, then they pay till 530. And with the like security system too, um, anytime the door opens or shuts during like that time frame, it actually I can see the history of it all too. So we don't have cameras in the building, but you, you can see it in that way too. Yeah, what time you can know when the last person left? Yeah. <laughs> if I want to get that deep into it. Yeah. So I can unless fifty seventy five or else I can like. I, I feel like somewhere around fifty to seventy five dollars an hour is it, you know reasonable right now and that's on a line. Um, but if you you know obviously yeah, if you do some math and come up with the perfect number that's fine as well. <laughs> there's no there's, there's no perfect so the building costs two million if we rent it out for <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. Right? Exactly. Like I realize we're not here, you know, it's a parks department. 
we're not here to make a profit. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure we just got to cover and our insurance costs. Yeah. and costs and things like that are covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I would say at fifty to seventy-five dollars an hour, we are covering our, our costs easily. Um, you know, somebody for two hundred fifty dollars all day, this is a steal. Mm -hmm. Oh, right? yeah, exactly. That's, mm -hmm. that's the reality too. So it is. It's just I agree that a lot of people are maybe thinking elsewhere because they don't need it for all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that feels like an extra cost that they're paying for that they don't need, you know. So, if you, so just how this would work, it's an official fee schedule has to be acted upon by the council. Mm -hmm. So if there's a recommendation from this board to change it, it would then have to go to the council for consideration and change. So does that raise any potential hassles, for instance, on your end? Say you have three or four people that want to run it in the same day. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't know what kind of paperwork you have, cleanup that has to occur. Yeah, I guess it would, I would just, that's a very, the only thing that I, that I, that, that's a very good question is the cleanup aspect of it. Um, like if it was on a weekend, like during the weekday, I'm, I'm here during that time frame, so that wouldn't matter um, if there was a reservation during that. But the weekend, it does raise a question for who would come in if there was multiple on Monday. I think you can also block it off where it's not available. It's just you know, one an hour or two mm -hmm. after someone yeah. comes it just to give you don't you just don't this happens in a couple other places. Yeah. Right, with parks where so this person ran it from two to four, it's yeah. not available again until six to yeah. Yeah. whatever that. Yeah. Exactly. But when it comes to like piece, the, it would be making sure the scheduling doesn't overlap with all Yeah. When it comes to like the scheduling and all of that, that's <laughs> not an issue with like the software and all of that, but that Having multiple a day, but um, yeah, that would make sense for me to set this up. Is that so? Do we have a like recommendation? Yeah. I know we said fifty seven five. We made, made a motion to make a whatever you want. To the <laughs> <laughs> so I'd, like to, I'd like to maybe like see a final cost of what you think that's going to be, and then mm -hmm. maybe send it out to us, then we can move forward and get it on the yeah. council if that makes sense, that. right? So let's just dial it in a little bit more. Yeah. What we're going to cut, what we're going to charge on that rate, mm -hmm. and then send that out to us, and then we can. Yeah, I think we have to be at the next meeting. Yeah, well, it has to be. Fun. We can't not be a. I can't send a recommendation. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> and that's, that's fine. Then I guess I would say I would make the recommendation that whatever Ashton is that she wants to do with it, that we can recommend to you. <laughs> 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 so, right? <laughs> if, that's, if that's comfortable yeah, with anybody else. You can do a recommendation. To not exceed, say, seventy-five dollars in the economic. Yeah. I think, you know, I think that's how many hours do you have to do math for me here, quick. How many hours do you have to, to get to two fifty at seventy-five dollars an hour for basically over three? Yeah. So. <laughs> so. So. So that actually fits our four-hour thought process to begin with, anyway. So. If you get it, if you take it for four hours, you're actually getting a deal at the two fifty. Yeah. I feel like that's just a motion to create a fee schedule of seventy five dollars an hour with a maximum of two fifty. motion has been made. So, uh, <laughs> is, there, is there a second? <laughs>
burn through it in ten minutes. Ten minutes or so. I will make a motion to approve it. Okay. <laughs> I'll second. Further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. We'll take that to council. So the Alliant Energy Tree Grant. Um, so as Jason has seen in his emails, uh, and a lot of you probably saw on the Facebook, uh, we have a grant um, to plant, rough, it's around 35 trees in the parks. Um, but with the grant, it's actually a grant that requires volunteer work. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I emailed you in November asking for your information to be on the, I had to make a volunteer um, committee, so I just used the rec committee. Um, so I asked you guys for your information, and that's what that was for. Um, so with that, um, the high school is helping out 30, it's on our Earth Day Celebration Volunteer Day. So 30 high school students will be helping to plant the trees. Um, we'll split up between Barlow and, or Barlow and Murray, and there's a couple going in Soresco. Um, and the seniors are going to help um, with whoever they need. They need. Uh, they're going to help out at uh, Murray Park as well, because that in the um, grant, I had to specify different uh, volunteer groups like per park or wherever they were being planted. Um, and so with that, I know you guys have jobs and lives and everything, um, but on April 19th from 2.30 to 3 o'clock, that's when we will be doing a large majority of the planting. Um, and we'll be doing uh, the mayor's, is it proclamation is the right word? The mayor's uh, Arbor Day proclamation will make it a uh, little event in a way with the tree planting and volunteerism and all of that. Um, if from, yeah, during that time frame. So if you guys are available, we'd love to have you guys there to help out with the planting. Um, the holes will already be pre-dug, so the, the hard part would be done. Um, so we're just doing, uh, obviously, the tree placement, backfilling, mulching, staking, and then the guys will come through with the water, dropping water then. But, so it's just that portion of it. Um, yeah, so, um, it's not, there's nothing to agree on or anything like that. I'm just inviting you guys to um, come and volunteer if you're able to, that is. Um, that would be great. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out right now. I just emailed uh, uh, Ted to get, or for him to kind of explain to me how the proclamation works for Arbor Day. Um, and I'm thinking that We'll start in either Barlow or Murray, start there, do the proclamation, because it's like a group photo op kind of opportunity too, and the Trees Forever organization that partnered with Alliant Energy for the grant, um, they can sometimes, if they're available, send a person down to speak at the planting events and stuff like that too. So I'm trying to work that out, so it would either, it would most likely be starting one and splitting up between the That's all I had to say, I think, about that one. Yeah. Obviously, there were a lot of trees cut down in parts over yes. the last couple of months. So, um, so this grant, and, and then we'll have another effort of planting trees in the uh, fall. So we'll plan on planting more. Um, so Public Works dropped all that trees. Most of it all is cleaned up. Uh, there will be stump grinding yet this year coming up to clean everything up fully. The vast majority of those trees were ash trees and were dead standing already. So um, there still remain some in parks, but um, there are about 40 ash trees left uh, in city parks and, and other facilities. Uh, about a year and a half ago, there were about 200 documented. So we've taken down 116. <coughs> Forty left, um, and then we'll start after those are down. We'll start with some of the other priority um, removals. So, but we also are committed to planting, and Ash didn't apply for the grant. So, kudos to her for getting that, and the Alliance Energy 
more funding it. Uh, we'll keep going. So, if you got any complaints or anybody others, we just we, we literally had to get them down. It was just the, the timing and the, the weather was perfect for us as a cruise to get them down. Yeah, so. And the guys did a great job with the cleanup and all of that. It was pretty swift. Okay. Uh, the county parcel. So I don't know if you want to explain kind of. I have, the <coughs> I have like my little mock up, but I can pull up the yeah. actual. You can pull up the. Do you want me to go to like the Fond du Lac maps? Or yeah, if you want to do that just to show. <coughs> So, so I believe this committee, maybe even a year, over, over a year ago. Yeah. Um, really? Or yeah. Um, there it is. Mm -hmm. Ashton was sent to a finance meeting at Fond du Lac County, right? Did you go to you yes. the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. And presented the idea. Uh, it's an in rent property. It's a little triangle there. Um, it's been foreclosed on by the county. Uh, we had talked about offering $10,000 to try to acquire it. When that happened, there was a, a federal Supreme Court case that discussed uh, in rent properties and the, the kind of seizure of tax uh, properties via tax foreclosure that then were given or taken at a discount to keep by the government or give to another local government, right? So basically saying you're not providing fair market value for the sale of that transaction by gifting it and using it for public purpose. If, if you sold it, you would get more. Therefore, it's, 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 you know, that's frowned upon. So the county had to essentially go back and do an appraisal to get a value of the lot. The lot was appraised at $23,000. So um, that is the minimum the county could accept for the lot. Um, in our communications with the county, uh, there are uh, there is a potential desire to partner to develop that parcel into a um, into a sort of trailhead bike um, trail facility. Uh, that entire stretch of the Northwestern Trail, if you're familiar with it, um, you know you start sort of at the library. Yeah. And there are no public restrooms, no public um, water fountain stations along the entire thing, all the way to um, to Fortify Bank in Green Lake. Um, so, in talks with the county, uh, we're on they're ongoing, but we wanted to just have a discussion here to see if there was a desire to continue to pursue this property and uh, potentially develop it. Um, the county would, you know, look at assisting us potentially, but I can't promise or they, we haven't had a hard, you know, haven't had a meeting about it in a while, but they, they're interested in helping us develop it and kind of hold us, um, you know, financially unharmed by, like, reimbursements to, you know, if we buy it, they'll help reimburse and develop the property. So, uh, no guarantees, the county executive has thought this is a great idea because when Ashton went to the finance committee, he's like, why, we should do this, right? But we're a year later, uh, not a huge, huge priority in terms of right now, but you know, getting the property and securing it is important. But the price has, you know, gone up now from 10000 to 23000 so. What's the distance from here to there? From here to yeah. there? What are we talking? Half a mile? And it's, if it's the only stop? What, so it's right here? Right. And we are, we're right here. Right. So it's not, I don't know what the distance is, but <laughs> the exact, but it's not too far. Mm -hmm. and there's a connection from this trail here into that trail. There's that, for, from the Murray Park Show? There's not a connection. Okay. Yeah. Legally, there's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was that? I think you probably kind of crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Someone actually did just ask that yesterday. Yeah. Okay. 
how you see the mass scoop and this connects well to that with the bathroom here. Right. Go all, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any restroom facilities on the mass scoop all the way to the front. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. All the way out to the front. So, now there's a couple more picnic spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it looks like. But, so Ashton and I have talked a little bit about it. She developed a kind of sketch of a plan, just kind of a, a concept um, about what, you know, we would like to put on the property or well, she really. And it's just very rough, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just kind of like, I was like, what would be nice there that's like simple yet a fun uh, atmosphere? Because with a, with the area that it's in, I thought of a, like a more natural look. So that's why I like just brainstormed. I was like, oh, a natural playground like would be nice in that area. And having a path going through, potentially a pond in your garden, and a natural playground, and the trail. I don't know. This was just my little vision I had the other day, um, which then obviously just includes like your basic bathroom, small shelter, that kind of stuff, bike ride, bike repair, water fountain. So yeah, just to bring this down. So 23 for the land, right? And then what do we think the cost on these projects would be? <laughs> like, I mean, hmm. it's fabulous. North of 100? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that kind of thing. adding a bathroom facility is going to cost quite a bit of money. And, and they have these, like, Adam, Adam and I were talking about, like, prefabricated bathrooms right, right. where everything's all put together. And then it gets plopped out. I watched a video of it yesterday of how they install it. Um, so I was just looking at this, and they're not huge. This one's like 10 by 17. So it's not a huge restroom or anything like that, but some sort of system like that. Could be an outhouse. <laughs> they did have that option. <laughs> we have water and wastewater. So it's yeah. the end. Yeah. Okay, that's, 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 that's what I kind of figured. So. What's the size of the property? Oh. It, I believe it's like just shy of a quarter acre. And um, you can click on the national oh, website. It'll show you kind of what it is. And, and it's a south. Oh, right there. Yeah. Just click on it. Bring up the info. Point three two. And, and the challenging part with the property is literally right next to it, the city owns a, if you need to zoom in a little, there's a little strip that's not right away. Just move to the right there. Click on the this. right there. The city owns a small parcel right there. For whatever reason. Okay. So it's not the sidewalk's not really on it. It's not right away. It's an actual parcel for whatever reason. No idea. But it, it limits some access to that parcel, right? Like if somebody wanted to take a water line across they need an easement from the city right. across our property. Right. Um, so there's really no, they, they value it as a residential lot, which you could put a house there. But there are challenges with that site. So, um, so. I yeah, think if we wait a little bit, we might be able to bring the price down when nobody else buys it. So, so <laughs> the, the, big, the biggest thing is, is, you know, we have a first, option on it pretty right. much with the county. It's just that's they're they're offering it at the point three. If they go to public sale, they will have a base bid of twenty three thousand. Right? So that could then go up, you know, um, if they get no one to take it at that, then they can talk about selling it for less. It's just it's it's not worth necessarily the gamble if this is a in the long range plans, but certainly um, um, we're just trying to get, we got to feel, the, the county's not putting it up for sale right now, they're holding it, but um, if this remains a priority, um, certainly any guidance from this committee would be, would be helpful, um, and then ultimately if we get to a point of recommendation to the council to try to acquire it, but um, I think we've got some stuff to work through yet, it's just we wanted to kind of get it in your minds. Right. I, I still like it. I voted for it last year already, but 
it's not a priority thing. Like we've got a lot of other park stuff, especially with Selfridge coming up this whole year. And, you know, No, it's not. No, it's not. No. Okay. Be aware of it. Be aware. Thanks, Ashton. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Um, Parks and Recreation Director report. Right back to you. Yeah, so I realized early, like a couple hours ago that I took off the programming updates and didn't realize it, so I'll just put that in there. Um, so we just had our the bunny hop last, or this past Sunday. Um, and to me, it was an awesome success. There was around 150 kids, based on my egg count, um, that came through with parents and everything as well. Um, I got a lot of emails and uh, texts and stuff of just how much fun it was and with the interaction and everything like that. Um, so I don't know. It was great to see that. I it really was such a um, like a simple. Uh, event, but just adding that, like, the interactive pieces, I think that was, that was, like, the hugest hit in it, um, was just the, just the fun, kind of, like, exercise portion of it, just getting people involved in, um, see, being on the trail, too, a lot of people didn't even know the trail was there, so, it was a good promotion of the new trail as well, so that was pretty nice. Um, uh, we had our, the Bob Ross painting, which was a couple week, weeks ago, um, and the farm that was going to be there this past Sunday, but because of the weather, they weren't able to make it. Um, she was asking me, she was like, have you ever done or thought about doing paint a paint night outside but with baby goats? And I was like, no, but well, that's not possible. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've been talking with the uh, Carolyn, who helped to lead the paint night for the Bob Ross, um, and setting up a outdoor paint night with just the baby goats there. They're the cutest little goats ever. Um, and just trying to figure out like which part to do too. Um, but anyway, so that's like a thing that we're trying to work on date-wise right now, and it's just super random, fun, like something you don't normally see. So I was like, oh, we're doing it. It's just totally going to be a thing. Um, so that kind of morphed into a new program, I guess, with the Bob Ross. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, right now, there's, um, it's Max called it Code Quest Parks Adventure. So it's just a, um, every week there's a riddle that's posted. You have to unscramble the riddle and then the answer is in the parks. <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to say the answer, but there is one out there right now. There's a little piece of paper. It's about this big. So once you figure out the code, then you have to go search based on or the riddle. You have to go search for the riddle answer based on it. And it's taped up in the park. So, um, so yeah, that's a fun thing we have going on right now. And it'll go on for the next five weeks. Five weeks total. Um, we have a, the last freeze and reel workshop coming up this this month. Um, Jason's Disc Golf Clinic, um, I, Katie Wang, she's a um, painter, artist here in Ripon, she's offering some uh, kids art classes, which we haven't really done much with youth, um, so we're, she's doing a kids garden favors class, a mom and me for Mother's Day, um, garden favors, and then um, kids canvas flowers and books is the theme of that one. Um, we have Jen from SSM Health coming in, she's a dietitian there, um, to offer a superfoods class so you get to make, I think she's doing like dark chocolate bark with different different superfoods in it so you get to make a treat as well as learn about that as well. So, um, and then we're bringing yoga in the park this summer, so from June to August, uh, Tracy Mathias will be leading yoga out here in Murray Park at the Weather's Bad. We'll just come in here. So that's from 6 to 7 for 12 weeks straight. Um, one, one I, I, can't, I, I can't remember. It's one or two per week. I think it's one. Um, and then as well, I reached out to SSM Health a month ago to see if they would be willing to sponsor senior yoga from June to August. 
with um, the collaboration with Ripon College. Um, so I actually just emailed him back today and he said that they met with their committee last or this week and he said they're confident they should be able to commit to the sponsorship so that will offer free yoga for 12 weeks for, this, for the seniors twice a week, like Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that's pretty cool. And it would be at, because of the timing wise too, it would be at the college um, because it interferes with the classes that go on here too. So we're so we can still have more programming going on. It'll just be at the college. Um, just some more that are that are out there and planning for the co-ed sand volleyball tournament at Ripon Fest this year. Um, Jason's other disc golf clinic. Um, <laughs> two of them. Uh, the push patrol, just like last year, sport fundamentals. Um, bringing back the co-ed volleyball league, but instead of a fall league, it'll be uh, during the summer months this year, now that the court's made. Um, and then Christy Ross, we're working on adding in um, about a month-long instructional pickleball. We were trying to do it last fall, but with the daylight, um, it just, we wouldn't have had enough light for it. So we'll be adding in that. And then Christine, Max, Mandy Kimes, and I, are working on um, just adding a little more fun to the 4th of July celebration. So for like one to two hours prior to the fireworks, just having some fun family events, little concession, stuff like that. Um, along with the Kiwanis' uh, baseball game that's going on too. So that's it for programming wise right now. Um, well, there's more coming, but that's the solidified stuff. Um, yeah. And then the, the director's report, I don't have much more, but tomorrow we're actually meeting with Ribbon Diamond Booster uh, Club, Ribbon New Softball uh, High School, I guess. Uh, we're all meeting to discuss um, just current uh, field conditions, long-term improvement goals and budget and funding for um, just potential projects and what we can do in the future for all the ball diamonds for all seven of them. So that would be nice to meet to, um, to discuss it with them. That's all I had about it. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Project updates? Did you want to So yeah, I'll, I'll just briefly talk about Selfridge. So uh, the city was planning on Selfridge in this year. Uh, we're still on kind of a path to um, bid that project out this year, so um, as it gets developed, we'll come back to the committee and make sure that there's everything, but we're, we're behind from the DNR perspective, or from the DNR, getting us the grant application in January, February, so now we got to, the grant agreement was signed, so now we can actually move on it. We did have a conversation today in a meeting with Alliant Energy and their engineers because Selfridge is on a contaminated site, and um, they want to get that site to closure. So uh, they have some work to do uh, this year to remove some soils. Um, so they have committed to working through that um, ahead of our project that very well could delay our project, but it is uh, wise for us to let them take care of what they want to take care of or need to take care of before we enter the property. So. I would fully anticipate Selfridge to be essentially a two season project, potentially starting in fall or late summer and moving over into spring and then being done by around summer of 25. So that's a little bit of a delay, but we just, we wanna make sure that this is done correctly with Alliant and everything at that site. Uh, and then Horner Park, um, they started taking the bridge out um, so there's still some permitting and some um, things going on there uh, that we kind of have to take pause now, but the, the bridge is out so it won't fall into the creek. Um, and uh, the rest of that project then will continue on into this year. Um, DNR permitting has been the issue there and the delay. Um, so we are still working through some of that, but um, uh, uh, Egbert, Excavating will be there in the next few months to get the path cut in and all that. And then that was that group that was going to plant trees, right? Yeah, the, um, I just, it's DAR, I can't think of what it is. Talkers of the American Revolution. 
yeah, Daughters of the American Revolution, um, they reached out, or someone reached out to me asking if they could um, plant some trees, or we would plant the trees, but if they could donate some trees to plant in the park. Um, and I brought up uh, Jefferson Elm, which we were going to order for the, the, the grant that we received, and she said, oh, that would be perfect. Um, it was Jefferson, past president. Um, and actually their founder was, uh, the park was named after their founder, Horner Park was. So they're looking to plant, uh, donate some trees to plant there as well. We'll take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other project updates? Is there anything else? Uh, if you have any suggestions for the agenda for next meeting, please make sure you send them out to Ashton or Adam. Um, as far as the next meeting, um, but you'll try to inform us and say Any other thing for the good of group? Otherwise, we'll make a motion to adjourn. Don't know. Have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. We are busy. Thank you.